Hello, and welcome to AHAVTS.com Clipcast on setting up a VPC on a Cisco Nexus 7000. My name is Aleem HLE, and oh, by the way, I'm this handsome gentleman to the right. Now, in this Clipcast, we'll be discussing what is a VPC, some key terminology related for configuring a VPC, and actually configuring the VPC on a Cisco Nexus 7000. So, let's get started. A VPC, or Virtual Port Channel, is a proprietary link aggregation mechanism developed by Cisco to provide increased bandwidth, link resiliency, and fault tolerance, by which two physical devices will appear as one device to a third device. Now, that third device could be a switch, server, or any other networking device that support link aggregation technology. More specifically, 802.3AD, LACP, or LACP for what is better known as. So, in our case, our two physical Nexus 7000 chassis will appear to our downstream device, our Catalyst 6500, logically speaking, as one chassis. Now, VPCs provide some key technical benefits, such as it eliminates block ports that you would find in traditional span and tree topologies, increased available bandwidth, faster convergence in the event of a link or device failure, and the allowance for dual home servers to operate in an active-active mode. Plus, VPCs also leverages on the native split horizon loop management provided by port channeling technology, meaning that a packet entering a port channel cannot egress that same port channel immediately. So let's go through some key components that are necessary for a VPC to be operational before we configure one. So the first thing we have is the VPC. And again, the VPC is the combined port channel from our VPC pair devices to our downstream device. Next, we have the VPC pair devices themselves, which are the pair devices that are connected with that special type of port channel. In this case, it will be our Nexus 7000s. Then we have the VPC pair link. Now, this link is used to synchronize states between the VPC pair devices, but more importantly, this link must be a 10 gigabit link. Next, we have the VPC domain. Now, the VPC domain is formed by the two VPC pair devices, and only one VPC domain can exist per VDC. And then we have the VPC pair keep alive link. Now, the pair keep alive link is a layer 3 link between the VPC pair devices that is used to ensure that both devices are up. In other words, it's the heartbeat between those VPC pairs. This fault tolerant link sends configurable periodic keep alive messages between devices on an out of band link. In some cases, the management interface on the Nexus 7000s can be used for this purpose, but usually a separate layer 3 link in a VRF is preferred. And last, we have the VPC member ports. And these are the ports on the Nexus chassis that participate in the VPCs themselves. So, now that we've defined our terms, let's go ahead and configure a VPC. Okay, in our diagram, we have two Nexus 7000s and one Catalyst 6500. Between the two Nexus 7000s are two 10 gigabit interfaces for our layer 2 pair link traffic and a 1 gigabit interface for our layer 3 pair keep alive traffic. For all intents and purposes of this lab, we'll be using the management zero interface for our layer 3 pair keep alive traffic and a single 1 gigabit interface from each of the Nexus 7000s to a Catalyst 6500 that will be used to form the VPC port channel. So before we begin any configurations, let's take a look at how the links are used from a span and tree perspective. Under ordinary, by which I mean rapid per VLAN span and tree, one of the links will be blocking to prevent layer 2 loops from occurring. And since we want our upstream devices to be our root primary and secondary bridges, the port that should be blocked is this one on the Catalyst 6500 going towards a Nexus 7002. And we can verify that on the Catalyst 6500 by issuing the show a span and tree VLAN 103 command. As you can see, 
gigabit 2 slash 2 is in a blocking state and that interface is going towards a 7k2. So now that we've validated the block port from a span entry perspective, let's go ahead and configure the VPC on the Nexus 7000 devices. This way the Catalyst 6500 uplinks to both of the Nexus 7000 devices will be active and the 6500 chassis will think it's connected to a single switch when in fact it's connected to two of them. So let's go ahead and call up my Nexus 7000 device. And here are a list of commands that we'll be issuing first. Okay. So the first thing I'll do is going to config T. Then I will turn on the VPC feature like that. Then I will create the VPC domain, if I could spell it. In this case, I'll use one. And um, we'll configure the VPC role priority. I'll configure this Nexus 7K1 to be one. Okay, and as you can see, it says the VPC will be flapped on a current primary VPC switch while attempting to do the role change. Uh, changes will take effect after the user has reinitialized the VPC peer link. Okay, so the next thing we'll do is create the VPC pair keep alive by using the following command keep alive and then the destination address. In this case, the destination address will be the management interface of our Nexus 7K2. And that address will be 10.2.8.18. And let's see what happens when I hit enter here. Okay, it says the management VRS will be used as a default VRF since our management IP of 10.2.8 that's 17 is in VRF management. Okay, and let's do the same thing on our Nexus 7K2. Uh, we'll go to config T. Install the feature VPC. Create the VPC domain. One, and next I will do the role priority. This one I'll make it two. Okay, same status message that we saw the last time. Then I will create the pair keep alive destination and in this case from Nexus 7K2 to 7K1 will be 10.2.8.17. You know I didn't do show command on the last one but we can go here and do the source, which be 10.2.8.18. But in this case, since we're using the management VRF, it will be automatically understood. And there we go. Okay, so the next thing we'll do to validate this VPC pair keep alive is issue this command here. Okay, so we'll do a show VPC pair keep alive. And as you can see from the message on the screen, the VPC pair keep alive status is pair is alive. Our send status is success. And the interface that we're using to send this pair keep alive is over the management zero interface. And our receive status is also success. And it's very important that we have the success on the status and receive status messages because this indicates that our pair keep alive is up and running. Okay, so now that we have established our VPC pair keep alive, let's go ahead and configure the VPC pair link between the Nexus 7000 chassis. And since I'm already on 7K2, I'll go ahead and configure that one. So let's go over here. I got that. Config T. We will go under the interface port channel 20 that is configured between the two chassis and issue the following command. VPC peer link. Take a few seconds for it to come up. And as you can see, there's another status message that popped up after I issued the command. And it's very important for us when we're configuring our VPC peer link. 
It says, please note that the span and tree port type is changed to network port type for VPC peer link. This will enable span and tree bridge assurance on VPC peer link provided that STP bridge assurance is not disabled. So that's very important for us to know that this interface, this port channel, has been changed to port type network. Okay, so we have configured a VPC peer link on 7K2. Let's go ahead and configure it on 7K1. Config T, uh, interface port channel 20. And the command again is VPC peer link. And we should see that status message again. And we'll give it a few seconds and hopefully our VPC peer link will be alive and everything will be running smoothly. So let's go ahead and issue this command here. Show the VPC brief. And as you can see for our VPC domain one, our peer status shows that the peer JCC has formed. Our peer keep alive status is alive and our configuration and per VLAN consistency checks are both successful. And our VPC role is primary as indicated by our role priority that we have configured. If we were to go to 7K2, that VPC role should be secondary. And let's check those configurations as well. Show VPC brief. And, and again, just like 7K1, VPC status shows the JCCs has formed and the pair keep alive is alive and our consistency checks are all successful. So now that we have our pair link and pair keep alive running and the VPC is up, let's go ahead and add some configurations to the interfaces connecting to the 6500 to form the VPC links. Okay, and I'll start on 7K1 this time and I will be issuing the following commands. So let's go ahead. Interface port channel 30 in this case. I will do switch port. Switch port mode trunk. Switch port trunk allow VLANs 100 to 105 that I have configured. I'll do a no shut at the moment and I'll configure VPC 30. Okay, then we'll go under the interface for which is connected to the 6500 and I will issue the command channel group uh, 30 mode active. And there we go. I'll do the same thing on 7K2. Face PO, PO30, switch port, switch port mode trunk, switch port trunk, allow VLANs 100 to 105, do a no shut, and here is VPC30 as well. Okay, go on to the interface 1 slash 3. And issue channel group 30 mode active. And we should be good to go. So now that we have configured our VPC on our interfaces going downstream to our 6500, let's issue the following command. Okay, show VPC brief. And if we scroll down a little bit, we see that our port channel 20 is up and active and the next one shows VPC status. Let's take a look at that. Our interface port channel 30 status is down. And the reason why our port channel is down is because we haven't configured the port channel on the 6500 as yet. And in fact, the port is still in a quote individual status from an LAC perspective. So let me issue the command port channel summary and let's see if that is still the case there and yes it is so our port channel is in the down state at the moment 
So let's now jump on our Catalyst 6500 to complete the VPC process by configuring the uplinks to the Nexus 7000s as a port channel. So let me bring up my Catalyst 6500 and I'll be issuing the following commands. Okay. Interface port channel 30 and I'll do no shut. Interface range uh, G2 1 to 2 and channel group 30 mode active. It's going to take a few seconds here for span and tree to converge and we'll take a look in a few seconds here. So let's go ahead and issue a follow command here show span and tree VLAN 103 and as you can see here our port channel 30 is showing root and forwarding for both cases towards our Nexus 7000 devices upstream. Next we will issue the command show ether channel summary and we can see that our port channel 30 is up for both interfaces. Now the Kala 6500 has a port channel connected to two different upstream devices. So now let's go back to one of the 7000s and do a show VPC brief. So let's go to our 7K1 and issue show VPC brief. We'll scroll on to the bottom and now our port channel 30 status is up. Our consistency is successful for the active VLANs 100 to 105. And let's go ahead and issue the command show span and tree VLAN 103. We are still the root bridge and we'll go down here and take a look at our two port channels. A port channel 20 is our VPC peer link to our neighboring 7K2 and a port channel 30 is our actual VPC, the virtual port channel, going down to our downstream device. In this case, our Catalyst 6500. And from every indication of the show commands that we have issued, our VPC topology is now up and running. So what do you think? VPCs are pretty cool, right? <laughs> well, in this clipcast, we talked about what is a VPC, some key terminology related to the VPC, and actually configuring the VPC on a Cisco Nexus 7000. You can follow us on YouTube at the URL shown, or visit us on the web at www.aha-vts.com for more flicks, clips, clipcasts, and much, much more. I hope this clipcast on setting up a VPC on a Cisco Nexus 7000 was informative. I'd like to thank you for viewing.